This week on HomeKit News, the Zemi Smart M1 Hub with Matter and Thread. Welcome back, everybody. Today we have a new hub from Zemi Smart, the Smart Matter Hub M1, and as the name implies, this is Matter compatible. So it should work with the following ecosystems, although at the time of this video, it doesn't actually work with Alexa, which is a bit odd. So this is primarily a Zigbee hub designed to work with Zemi Smart and Toya certified devices, but in addition, it also acts as a full threadboard router. So if you have some older Apple Home hubs that don't have that built in, like the first generation HomePod or some of the older Apple TVs, this could help as well as save you some money. This means it'll work with thread devices like the Nanoleaf A19 bulbs, the 2.0 smart button, the Onvis S4 smart plug, and the EVE contact sensor, all of which are now available as Matter over thread devices. Comparing this to the first Zemi Smart HomeKit hub, you can see the design is totally different. Although they both work with HomeKit, only the newer model will work with other platforms without using the older cloud integration method used by Amazon and Google, although that's still an option if you prefer. So what's in the box? First of all, the hub itself, which we'll look at in more detail in a bit. There's an Ethernet cable, as this is only a wired hub like before, which I prefer. A USB-A to USB-C power cable, which is a small improvement, although just like before, this does not come with a power supply, so you need to use your own. There's a small SIM pin to reset the hub if required, and finally a small manual with a matter code, which is also repeated on the side of the packaging, and if you throw both away, there's still another instance on the underside of the hub. Let's take a closer look at the hub itself now, and there's not a lot to see to be fair, but the back features the Ethernet port for a wired connection, a USB-C port for power, along with a small hole for resetting the hub as required. In order to test this hub out, I asked Zemismart to send me a few sensors. So they sent me a contact sensor, a motion sensor, and a temperature and humidity sensor. I do have some additional sensors that are TUIA certified, which should also work, but it's important to point out that of these, the two buttons are not currently exposed to Matter platforms. So in the case of this wireless four button wall switch, although it works in the TUIA app, it won't show up in Apple Home. The same goes for this single small Zigbee button. Zemismart said they will be made Matter compatible via the hub in the new year. So as it stands, this hub has less devices exposed to HomeKit at present. Adding the hub to your smart home is a bit of an odd situation as you still need to initially use the Toya app, but the app itself doesn't use the Matter code provided. Instead, the app discovers the hub using Bluetooth as per Matter and it's added no QR code needed. I then added the three sensors that were sent and they're now connected to the hub as you can see here. When pairing it to Apple Home, once again, you don't use the provided QR code, but instead select third party control where a new matter code will be generated, which is a little bit strange. However, I was easily able to add this to HomeKit, although even more odd is that a page regarding access codes pops up, which you normally only see when setting up a smart lock. Zemismart are aware of the bug, so there should be a fix soon, although it doesn't actually seem to do anything. If I now go into my test room, you can see I have all the sensors in there, which is temperature and humidity, the contact sensor and the motion sensor. These show up automatically in HomeKit as they were added to the hub first. And if we have a quick look at the hub, you can see under connected services, it shows both Apple Home and Toya as connected platforms. As this has a thread border router, if I go into the Nanoleaf app and go into Thread Network, you can see external border routers listed, which are my four HomePod minis. Then we have a Google Nest Hub Max, and then the SmartThings station below that. And finally, you can see the M1 Hub's border router listed. Aside from Apple Home, I added the hub successfully to SmartThings, where all three child devices are also exposed. This was also the case with Google, although initially the devices and the hub would appear as offline, even though they worked. I'm not sure what the issue was there either. So is there more I can tell you about the Thread Border Router? Well, in my home, I have three ecosystems running that use Thread. Apple Home with four HomePods, Google with the Nest Hub Max, and smart things with the smart station. The one ecosystem that I don't have a border router in is Amazon, but as the hub won't work with Amazon yet, 
I was unable to test the border router functionality. And to be honest, I wasn't prepared to disconnect my HomePods for this test, sorry. So to conclude, Matter is supposed to be fully compatible, but in this case, it isn't quite yet. Now, some people had issues with the previous hub's Zigbee signal strength, and this seems to have been improved. Here's a layout of our apartment with the hub connected at one end and the sensors at the other end, with three walls and nine meters between the two, but with no issues with connection. So that does seem to be an improvement. So to the pros and cons, and whilst there aren't any of the latter, there are things to know that could sway you one way or another. But let's start with the fact that this is Matter compatible, which is a step in the right direction, at least for Google and Amazon users. To have a thread border router included does help spraying the signal if you don't want to spend on another HomePod Mini, for example. This is also a good option for Toyo users who want to get into HomeKit, but also the other platforms whilst not relying on the cloud-based connection that Amazon and Google have previously used. At the time of this video, less devices are currently supported, which is probably partly a matter issue, so hopefully that'll change soon. You do still need the Toya app, although only for initial setup, so once you've added your child devices to the hub and paired the hub with Apple Home, you can effectively delete the Toya app. And finally, if you're an Amazon user, this isn't currently supported. So until ZemiSmart fix the issue, if the reason lies with them, of course, then you should wait. That's our take on the latest Matter and Thread device from ZemiSmart. So I hope this overview has informed you on what to expect. And if you're still here, it means you've probably found this video useful. So please do like, share and subscribe if you haven't done so already. In the meantime, stay safe. And as Betty White once said, the older you get, the better you get, unless you're a banana.